Yeah, I got woken the fuck up by a couple of things. One was my, she was called a community support officer. Basically, she was this, my suicide watch lady, and she told me, listen, Paul, if you don't get your shit together, you're going to die. Yeah. Secondly, was a guy called Garrett J. White from Wake Up Warrior who basically stood in my fucking right in front of my face and called me a liar. And he was right. Nobody had ever really called me that before who I fucking respected. Um, and that's what men need, I think. I think some men might need an arm around them, but... It's not going to solve not what, It's not going to solve Not all the time. It's, the all the time. it's like man management. In yeah. football, they call it man management. Some yeah. players need an arm around, the shoulder, uh, arm around their shoulder and like um, giving a confidence boost. And some guys need to fucking rock it up the arse. Yeah. I'm of the opinion that most guys that I work with need somebody to tell them what the fuck is up. Go, go, go. What is up? Welcome to Paul Mort Talks Shit with Paul Mort and producer Mac. <laughs> I thought you weren't going to do it. I'm going to do it. Producer Mac. Producer well, Mac Attack. That's Mac Attack's new name. Mac is back. Mac with a big sack. The Vanilla Gorilla. I'm sure you're going to... Um, to, to, to learn more about Mr. Mac Reader as time goes on. Um, but today, podcast number one, and I, if you're on YouTube right now, look at me. Look how fucking excited I am. I am absolutely buzzed to get this thing, this show on the road, because it's been a while in the making. I mean, there's a couple of things that I want to cover in this first in this first episode, um, before you get on all the exciting ones with our guests and the people who are speaking to you and some of these celebrities and fucking sports stars. Um, but I thought, you know what, I'm going to drop the first one with me so you can get to know a little bit more about me. And the first thing is, is why I've started this, um, why I've started Paul Moore Talk Shit. Well, essentially, because people keep fucking asking me to. Yeah. Back in 2014, I actually had uh, the number one podcast in the UK. It was called um, the Paul Moore Podcast. That is, was that your first one or your that second one? My first ever podcast is called the Paul Moore Podcast. <coughs> and it was um, wildly... Successful, but during that time was actually some of the darkest periods of my life. I mean, some some of you listeners listening in here will remember some of those times. I had people like Gary Vaynerchuk on there. I might actually drop that one soon. I think that'll be good. Uh, yeah, it'll be cool. And we had a bunch of um, back then. It was kind of fitness professionals, some of the biggest players in the fitness industry. Because back then, that was my background. So um, I actually loved doing that thing, but I, I was really struggling during that time. Like, really, really struggling. I think we ended up doing a couple of hundred episodes and then just binning it off because I had to get a handle on my on my self-care. I had to get a handle on my personal life, my business life, my relationships, my body, which I'm sure we'll come on to later. But I started this show, in essence, because, listen, during lockdown, I must have did 30 or 40 interviews for people during this yeah. entire lockdown period. I think that's what kind of give you the kick up the arse as well, wasn't it? It the kick up the arse because I, I ended up after, often... I did some amazing shows during that time and I ended up often talking about the same things over and over. quite repetitively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I thought, you know what? I want to, I'm going to start my own show. Honestly, nothing to do with Joe Rogan getting hundred million from Spotify. <laughs> That's bizarre. Nothing to do with way. that. It just so happened that around about the same time, I was like, you know what? I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to launch Paul Moore Talk Shit. Um, and the thing is, as you'll see, we're not fucking around with this thing. We'll do a few Zoom interviews here and there, but when I decided to do the podcast, I was like, I'm not going to do it half assed Like, anybody that knows me knows that I'm kind of, I'm either going all in, balls deep, or I'm not going in at all. Pull that a touch. touch and this was a case of, I'm sitting too far away from the mic here. Yeah, that's good. Um, this was a case of, listen, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it properly, and I'm going to go all in, all in on it. So much so, producer Mac. Producer Mac. Producer Mac, Mac attack, actually has a gorilla, brand whatever it is. new has a brand new role, which is essentially just sorting out the podcast. Yeah. So we actually had to employ somebody new, Catherine, who you may get to meet at some point, to do Mac's old job so you can do this. So as I say, there's there's going to be no half measures with Paul Moore Talk Shit. And and as you know, some of our guests that we've already had on, some that we've got lined up, we're kind of doing this thing right. Um, because like I say, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do, do it properly. Yeah, there's so, no point half arsing it like... I mean, I've been on, like I say, I've, I've kind of half horsed. I remember when I did uh, the Paul Moore podcast back in the day, everything was on um, Skype. Yeah, remember that? Yeah. Everything was on Skype and we recorded it. And, and again, I've, I haven't got a problem with those podcasts. Some of them are incredible. But I've been on a couple of shows where it's been a live experience like this. It's just much better. Dude, it's so much better. I mean, the, the last one I went on where it was in person and I was a guest was James Smith's podcast. And that thing's had over 100,000 downloads. 
Um, you, get, you get the connection with the person you as well. Get the isn't connection. It? I mean, you still get that online, but Aye, not nowhere near to that. The extent. energy's better. Yeah. You get a feel for each other. You can have more crack. It's more relaxed. You you seem to be. You're, you're not, not getting interviewed like as if nah, it's online. It's just it's yeah. more of a conversation yeah. than an interview. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm hoping for with this show. And actually, the second podcast that I did was called The Daily Diesel. Mm. And I started that, I'd say, maybe 2016, 2017. And I did maybe 300 episodes. And this is how half arse that one was. I quite literally used to just talk into my phone, upload the... The, the MP3 file at Dropbox and then get somebody else. They were on your way to work as well, they weren't were on they? My, literally, <laughs> if you've ever seen my Facebook and my yeah. Instagram, I do a lot of stuff when I'm walking to the office. Yeah. Because um, I'm a big fan of walking for general health, for mental health, for keeping your weight in check, um, for just feeling fucking great. Walking's a big fucking deal. Um, and I used to just record that and then I stopped doing that because I'll tell the truth, Mark, the return on investment just wasn't worth it. Nah, I remember, I remember for, I mean, you're, you're, Doing them on your way to work, whereas now you, you you feel that time more productively. I would say. Well, it's like I'm do, there. Just wasn't there wasn't that many people listen to it. Yeah. I didn't feel like I got anything from it other than to get a rant, and mm. I kind of do the same thing. If you watch my Facebook or yeah. Instagram, I'm kind of still delivering value, but it seems to just get more traction. Yeah, I think it's a lot better as well because it's a, most of them are live as well. Yeah. So again, it's that in person live yeah. connection. It is. He's, like, he's recording this on his phone now, whereas you were doing the daily diesels and. Pe- I mean, I know when I, I have watched. Sounds the- a big sounds a big yeah. thing on podcasts. Yeah. Like it's one of the number one things, which is why we've invested heavily in mics and kit and camera and mic on a camera. All the gear, the idea. All the gear, no fucking <laughs> idea. We're just making it up as we go along. So yeah, like I say, to start the podcast, I thought you know what. I'm going to do it fucking properly. Yeah. And one thing I was thinking was a lot of people have, have commented on the name of the podcast. So we called it, well, I decided to call it Paul Moore Talk Shit, which some people love. But then I've had a bunch of comments saying, yeah, but Paul, you don't talk shit. But think about it. It's a play on words. Like, I didn't want this podcast to be like a too serious. Yeah. Because I'm not 100% serious. There's a couple of things I'm serious about. One of them is results. The second one is doing what I said I would do. Mm. And But I don't take myself too seriously like and i wanted the podcast to be relaxed where we essentially it's more shoot the shit yeah than like just conversa- shit. conversations yeah. more than in- interviews and the thing is area. something that we've talked about with a lot of guests and i'm gonna end up talking about a lot is just criticism because the world's full of fucking critics yeah the world is full of fucking critics people who are spectators who don't have the balls to put themselves on the line and step into the fucking arena in any area of their life, whether that's business, whether that's fitness, whether that's online, whether it's fighting, which we're going to talk a lot about, whether that's sports, whatever it is, the world's just full of critics. So mm. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm just going to get it over with. Yeah. Anybody that thinks I talk shit, I'm just going to be like, listen, you're not going to say anything about me that I haven't already said. Yeah. And that's why on these podcasts and any videos that I do, you'll find me being so open I'm being so honest about a lot of stuff, whether that's drug use, whether that's boozing, whether that's porn, whether that's eating shit, whether that's struggles of life, whether that's arguments, whether that's fucking fear, whatever that is, I'm going to be open about it because there's one thing that I'm certain of is that the most powerful person in the room is not the smartest one, not the one with the most money, but the one that has nothing to hide. Yeah. And that's where I feel that like I'm at. So there's, that's essentially why we came up with the name. Mm-hmm. Um, so enough about that, because that's kind of boring. Yeah. But the, the boring <laughs> bit's over with, right? I, I want to get on to the real point of me doing episode one before we get into episode two, which is with the fucking Gypsy King himself. The fucking fire. That's yeah, what it is. Because there'll be a lot of you guys who, who are tuning in. Maybe you've waited for the Tyson Fury episode, the, the, the Sam Gowland episode, the fucking Davy Grant, Alex Enland episode. Maybe it's the James Smith episode. Mm. Or the cr- you, you maybe have been waiting for another episode, but if you're anything like me, you're going to be like, you know what? I'm going to binge on this fucking podcast. Yeah. So I'm going to have to start. If I'm going to watch Game of Thrones, I'm not starting on series three. Well, that's the thing. Even, even even if people do watch, watch whatever one their preference mm-hmm. is, I mean, if I know what I'm like, if I like something, I'm like, right, well, I'm going to have to, I'm fo- I'm have to fucking watch them all. Yeah. I'm starting episode yeah. one. So I thought in this episode one, I mean, a lot of you guys listening in will already know who I am. Maybe you follow me on. Facebook, maybe you've listened to my podcast before, maybe you've heard me on someone else's podcast, maybe you've seen me on Instagram or LinkedIn. Yeah. Or LinkedIn. MySpace. <laughs> MSN. <laughs> MSN or fucking Bebo. Yeah, one thing you won't have seen me on is uh, that Viber. I know Max is a big fan Viber. of Viber. Isn't that the, it's like Tinder, but for... Um, Grinder. 
grinder that is. Viber. That's Viber. I haven't, haven't got a that's fucking clue. That's for the big dildo fans. <laughs> that, I think that's the secret that's one. That's the double, double-ended dildo. <laughs> <laughs> so for the, for the people who, because obviously a lot of people who do know you are going to be watching this, who who is Paul Mort? Um, so I get asked in, this, in a nutshell, dude. It's random that this is my podcast. I'm getting asked the same question that I get asked on every single yeah, podcast. But there's going to be people coming in. Mate, it's important. The first fucking episode. You're right. It is important this because, um, like you got, you, a lot of people are thinking, well, who the fuck's this guy? Who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> we've got to get him on, by the way. Who the fuck is this 100%. guy? Yeah, we've got to get him on. So here's the deal with me. Right now, I'm gonna start with where I'm at right now. Right now, I work mainly with. Married businessmen who want to get the shit together. And I say work with them because guys don't like admitting they need help. No. Like if it's a t- if it's like an elevator pitch or on a LinkedIn, people will be like, I help so and so. But from my experience of working with fucking thousands of men over the last four years, three, four years, men hate admitting they need help. Yeah. And those are essentially the guys that I work with. Men that don't like admitting they need help, but actually need help. Mm. Not even help, support, guidance, leadership. Um Someone to give them the tools and the strategies to, to change their life, both for themselves, for their families, for their businesses and whatever. But that doesn't mean to say that that's exclusively who I work with because I work with people from all walks of life. Mm. And But essentially my main, my main kind of time and energy and the main place I spend my time and energy is working with these guys. Yeah. Um, and that, that's, I suppose, who my, my, people would say a target market, but most of the content in the podcast is going to be aimed at these married businessmen. Because, and here's why. Doesn't mean to say women can't listen to it. Doesn't mean to say kids can't listen to it. <laughs> Although I have already mentioned double-ended dildo. <laughs> Dad, what's a double-ended dildo? We <laughs> shall find out. They've got to learn one day. And it doesn't mean to say that women can't listen to it. Employed guys can't listen to it. Single guys can't listen to it because I know there'll be a lot of you ladies and gents out there listen to it. However, the way that I speak and the way that I'm going to be interviewing people and talking to people and the things that I talk about are all from experience. Yeah. Like I'm not, I don't deliver anything that's based in theory. And I have never been a single woman yeah. or a middle-aged man yet. I'm getting something closer <laughs> to it. Never been a middle-aged man going through midlife crisis, although I have had a few crises. So like when I'm speaking and when I'm telling stories, they are from my life. Yeah. And like I said, that's who I am. a married businessman who needed to get his shit together way back when. So that's who I work with, and I do that through online training, online videos, live events, coaching, mentoring, my book, um, which if you're on YouTube, you can see, Fucking Unstoppable, The Modern Man's Guide to Grabbing Life by the Balls, which you can get all of this at paulmo.co.uk. Shameless, UK. shameless fucking seal. paulmo.uk, even. I don't even know that. Good right. job, producer Max, yeah. Good job, producer Max, yeah. <laughs> also website guy, Mac. Also camera guy, Mac. Also hardcore closer, Mac. Yes, um, Man, Mac of all trades. Yeah, but I do that through all of those. And I suppose that we have ended up doing that is and my, my, my uh, speaking coach, Mr. Michael Heppel, who's probably listening in, hates it when I say this in any speaking gigs that I do, because I do I do a lot of speaking as well. I've spoken on a lot of stages in front of a lot of people. I've just stumbled into doing this. Yeah. Like this was never a, a, a goal of mine or a dream of mine or even a target of mine to be coaching lunatics. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a straight way to put it. And that's it. what I do, hundreds of them. And it was never it was never on my radar to do it. Um, and I think that's what makes it so pure as well, though, because it what well, one it's raw. It's yeah. it's it's not like you're talking from like you're not preaching shit. No, and it's 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 like it's meant to have happened, and yeah, and, it's and, crazy. That, and that's why that's why it's so good. It is crazy, and I think that's why it works because because I never planned on doing it. Yeah, because it wasn't a fucking dream of mine. It's just happened organically. Yeah, it's just happened organically. Like essentially, I got my shit together. Everybody saw, heard, and watched me get my shit together yeah. on social media. I, I think that's my job because you had people along the process. I the did. Journey I've had with people, you. there's guys in my program now, I'm sure you'll hear from, who've seen the entire fucking journey. Yeah. They've seen the entire thing. Yeah. So, and, and, and people are quick to smell bullshit. Mm. People are very quick to smell bullshit. And again, every, so, someone, somewhere is always going to think you're full of shit. Hence, Paul Moore talk shit. <laughs> but it kind of happened organically through me getting my shit together. People noticed and asking how I did it. And then, like basically fucking begging me to start a program. Going from there, yeah. Begging me to start a program and then it's just kind of, it's blown up from there. I mean, this podcast, if you're going to share it with all your friends, by the way, do it, is going to be a big deal. My book's exploded. 
um, my videos and my Facebook, my Instagram's taken off. We've just signed a book deal with someone who's um, who I can't. I was going to say, I was, are we going to mention that? No, one, we're man? not going to talk about that yet because <laughs> I haven't signed the contract yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we've done that deal. And, and like I say, we've helped hundreds of guys. And, and it's happened by accident. So let's rewind as to how it happened, really. So a lot of you guys listening will already know this. If you don't, you can go check it out on Facebook. In 2016, I released a video on my Facebook page. And I basically talked about how two years earlier, First happened August 2014, but the biggest meltdown was December 2014 in here in South Shields. I just moved home from Marbella, where I'd lived for a couple of years, and I was at rock bottom. And I basically, in this video, I described what it was like to be suicidal and ready to end your life, even though from the outside looking in, you had everything. And I'm sure a lot of guys have experienced this. Maybe some of you ladies have experienced this. I know uh, Mr. Fury, who's on our next episode, don't fast forward to that dickhead. It's because I'm, <laughs> listen, don't you start fast forwarding and jump on it episode two. Wait. Um, uh, and I just basically described the experience. The next thing I know, the video's got 5.7 million fucking views, mm. which is insane. And that changed my life in the fact that I was like, wow, it's not just me. People, people, others. People needed to fucking hear that message. Yeah. And the same with, it didn't just change my life. It changed the lives of the fucking thousands of people who commented and shared on it because they thought the same thing, Mark. Like, it was just them. It's not just me. Yeah. Shit. This guy's explained it in a way that I've never heard it explained before. Yeah. And I suppose the reason I was able to get it across was because I've experienced it. Yeah. Like, and we've had this conversation before. What, like, what kind of, like, if you will put it into words or feelings, what does, what does that, feel like what you would describe okay. i would describe it as and then listen i said the reason i was able to describe it was because i've experienced it but also what i experienced was trying to get help from people i hadn't experienced it mm. so i'd seen gps i'd seen shrinks and I'd you seen, could sniff the bullshit from a mile away <laughs> people who haven't I've got gone no doubt through they're it. trying their best yeah but they haven't been through with it. the incredible knowledge that they've got but yeah. i could look them in the eye and i'd be like you tell me to keep a mood diary bro yeah. really Mm. You're telling me to go and fucking exercise. I can't even fucking get out of bed without yeah. wanting to rip someone's fucking head off, mate. Like, I could tell. So when I did this video, it was interesting, you know, Mac, because I did the video with no script. It didn't get really get edited at all. Like this, I'm like, Mac, let's not do too much editing on this shit. Yeah. I mean, sometimes on Instagram, I'll edit a video just so, like... I get looks rid of nicer. the waffle. I get yeah. rid of the waffle. It looks nicer. And Instagram, you have a very short amount of time to get yeah. someone's attention. So I, uh, <laughs> I'd been recording marketing videos that day, and I said to the video guy, I said, "Listen, I'm fucking tired, but I've got something to say. Come over here." And I just fucking spoke from my heart, and I think that's why it resonated with so many people because I use language, and I said, "I say even now, the reason what I say resonates with people is because." I say it in a way that I need it said to me. So it's not for everybody. Yeah. That's why so many get, people get triggered by what I say. And that's why we call it Paul Moore Talk that's Shit. That's why we call it Paul Moore Talk <laughs> Shit. I get people telling me you talk shit. And it's because I say things in a word, in a way that I need them to be said to me. And I'm a guy that doesn't need an arm around my shoulder. No. Most men don't need to be mollycoddled and no. told that everything's okay. No. Most men need to be handed their fucking ass on a plate. Most men need to be walking the fuck up. That's what happened to me. So, I got woken the fuck up by a couple of things. One was my, she was called a community support officer. Basically, she was this, my suicide watch lady, and she told me, listen, Paul, if you don't get your shit together, you're going to die. Yeah. Secondly, was a guy called Garrett J. White from Wake Up Warrior who basically stood in my fucking, right in front of my face and called me a liar, and he was right. Nobody had ever really called me that before who I fucking respected. Um, and that's what men need, I think. I think some men might need an arm around them, but... It's not gonna. It's not gonna not solve what. Time. It's not gonna solve. Not the all the time. Though. It's like man management in yeah. football. They call it man management. Some yeah. players need an arm around the shoulder, uh, arm around their shoulder, and like, um, giving a confidence boost. And some guys need a fucking rocket up the arse. Yeah. I'm of the opinion that most guys that I work with need somebody to tell them what the fuck is up. Yeah. So for me, going back to your question that I that I um, rinsed over <laughs> and I've washed over, is the way that I described that feeling was I just felt like a lot of pain a lot of darkness, and I felt like I was drowning in a sea of negative thoughts, and I couldn't see a way out. And the worst days were the days where I was both anxious and depressed. 
Like that sounds weird because yeah. they're two opposite energies. Yeah. Anxiety is a high energy state, yeah. right? You've got so much energy, your heart rate's through the roof, you're sweating, your breathing's different, and depression is a completely opposite state. Down so I go from dump. being angry and anxious, fuck, I need to get my shit together, fuck, I've got this to do, fuck, I've got that to do, fuck, 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 fuck. And then I'd have this fucking meltdown after and I'd be super fucking low. Mm. And that was actually, I'm being diagnosed bipolar. Yeah. So I was actually diagnosed bipolar back in 2014 in around about the June time. It was like a month after my daughter was born, I was diagnosed bipolar. Um, uh, so the experience of that is you'd have these massive highs where you felt like you were king of the fucking world and you'd have these gigantic lows that were like holiday blues times 300. Yeah. Times and, 300. and coming straight off this high as well. Oh, straight so, off the high. Straight off the high. Now, yeah, so it's even again, quite, we'll probably end twice as worse. Yeah, we'll probably end up talking a lot about bipolar in the future, but I'm of the opinion that I didn't actually fucking have it. Yeah. I just have periods of extreme... I'd create a lot of stress for myself and I'd create a lot of excitement for myself. And then that, what goes up must come down. Yeah, Again, definitely. we'll talk about that with Tyson Fury. And I've also got no doubt about it, mate. It was very strongly linked to how much I was boozing and how much fucking coke I was sniffing. 100%. Like, that's got it. That has an effect on you. You can't put fucking diesel in a petrol engine and expect it to fucking operate. Yeah. And you know what, though? Like, I get it. I get it. We'll do an episode soon where I talk about the holiday that I just had and some of the lessons that I got from that and why I don't drink on holiday, etc. He's not et just naturally this tanned. I'm not just no, And he's, not just. he looks 10 times more tanned sitting next to me. Yeah, I do look... Uh, <laughs> I, I am pretty fucking brown right now. Yeah, I am pretty brown right now. But um, yeah, the reason I was drinking so much, and it's not an excuse, is that at that point in my life, I felt like I was... Looking back at it now, I was lacking purpose. Like, I'd built this life that from the outside looking in was dreamy yeah. like i lived in marbella i had two beautiful kids hot wife business that was making more money than i ever thought possible as a kid mm. from south shields with two fucking gcses and i kind of didn't know how to handle it and i'd sacrificed a lot of stuff to build this thing you know like i'd sacrificed friendships i'd sacrificed my physical health i mean i was five stone heavier than i am now i had all these sinus problems from sniffing fucking so much fucking gear i had my asthma was horrendous i'd get these really bad headaches all the time I was basically just in, I was basically a fucking clip mate. And I did that because I didn't know how else to deal with the stuff that came with that. Yeah. I didn't know what to do with the money. I was isolated as fuck. I didn't have any fucking friends out there. And uh, it was just my way of feeling something. And, and anyone that, that drinks and does drugs, it's just an escape. Like yeah. you just, you're trying to feel a sense of control mm. and it's not real control. Like it's all over the place. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, like I say, I was I was trying my best to deal with just life. So I think for, from your like first was it 2014, 2015, the first breakdown. 2014, 2014 August, December. I had my first one, but the biggest one that I had when I was on the cliff was December of that same year. And when when from there, like when did you kind of start realizing that you were getting your shit in line? Oh, do you know what? I still feel like I'm doing it now. Yeah, I would. Oh, but I'm, it, oh, it, it, it's never ending, is it? it it's always there's always when did something. Because I, oh, I can't think of a particular incident, but because mindsets are difficult to think to track. Yeah. Like you don't know you're getting better. Yeah, it it just happens. Like you realize one day it's you're like more of a natural thing. Like I think of some incidents. Like you think about it. I, I'm thinking about events that I've done. Mm. Like. My body starting to get in shape was a telltale sign that yeah. I was looking after my What was your health. biggest? My biggest that have been like 19 stone maybe. Shit, and what you at now? I don't know. <laughs> 80, I was 82 kilos this morning and really upset about it because I was 79 before I went uh -huh. on holiday. <laughs> Mate, it's let's, only, let's three, not ki three kilos on holiday ain't bad at all. That's a record for me. <laughs> that's not bad at all. I've been on it for five on. That's anyway, not bad. I was only away for seven days, bro. <laughs> and I trained like all the time. Mate, you're on what holiday. What would happen if I didn't train? So yeah, I would say that. I mean, listen, I've done a lot of stuff since then. I could say my body changing. I could say when I had my first box. But match, I mean, I mean, in this, did, did you ever? Was there ever a point where you were kind of like, obviously after the big, big breakdown? Yeah. Kind of. When, when was the first time that you, that you, you, know what, you mate, started realizing? That, well, that was for me. Was those two incidents? One of them was around about the seventeenth of December. Uh huh. One was on the twenty seventh of September, I think, or might have been the twenty third. Of 2014 or 2015? Yes, 2013. Those were the two incidents that I can't remember anything that I was like, you know what, I'm getting my shit together. Yet. Yeah. But those two were the two incidents where I was, I knew I was never going back. Yeah. Like, 
that you'd that's be, what you'd I thought be about. Those were fucking, those were pivotal moments for me that I'm not willing to go back to now yeah. because I spoke to Tyson about this as well. Do you think you'd ever end up back there? And he said, yes. Yeah. And I think I get asked this all the time as well. Do you think you'd ever end up back on the cliff? I say, yeah. That's why I don't fucking That's stop. the drive. That's the that's fire. That's why I don't fucking stop. Yeah. Because it's like anybody that's ever lost weight by going to the gym and eating better, right? Anybody that's ever done that, like, and then stop doing it, you get fat again. Yeah. The reality is you actually get fatter. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the same with my mental health, with my mindset. If I stop doing what I do now that got me to where I am, guess what's going to happen? Like I did on holiday, I gained fucking three kilos in seven days. Yeah. It'll take me two, three weeks to get that off now. Yeah. Um, but because listen, what we've got to understand is, and I hope we'll cover this a little bit more today, is that outcomes don't happen by accident. No. I didn't end up suicidal by mistake. <clears throat> no. Like, that, that's what I would call a lag indicator. Yeah. Being suicidal, being depressed, even panic attacks that I've had on flights and that, that they, they don't happen by accident. I've no. said it before. This will probably lose us half of the people that are listening right now who have problems, who've had any challenges with mental health. You don't catch depression. You don't catch anxiety. Neither of them are contagious. No. They're both created. They're all created. All these challenges are created. So I didn't end up on that cliff by mistake. I've got no doubt that that was what I call a lag indicator. That result, that outcome where I ended up on the cliff was my responsibility. Mm -hmm. Nobody else's responsibility. Mm -hmm. Can't blame my mum and dad. Can't blame my town. Can't blame bringing my teachers at school. Mm -hmm. Can't blame my upbringing. Can't blame that, uh, like, I can't be like, well, I've got one arm, one leg. I've done this. I've been bankrupt. I've been... I can't blame any of that. No. It was my behavior that led to me being on a cliff. And do you think people get attached to that kind of like persona and ideology of, all right, well, but like the bipolar situation, like- you, Oh, they made it, a part of their identity. And, and that's what kind of, the, it, it almost gives them a reason to give up or not give up, just make things harder for themselves. It gives them a reason to justify their behavior. Yeah. It gives them a reason to justify their behavior. And guess what? That was me. Yeah. I'm bipolar. Yeah. I'm, I'm it's bipolar. kind of like I'm a- I'm bipolar. It's like a hall pass. Yeah. I didn't do that for very long though. And mm. I get it all the time. Someone's like, I'm bipolar. I'm like, you're not bipolar. Whatever their name was, I said, yo, I'm Paul Moore. I'm not yeah. bipolar. Yeah. I was given the label of bipolar by a doctor who, by the way, they don't do any tests for bipolar. Mm. They gave me some meds. <laughs> Funny enough, they actually gave me antidepressants at the time. Fluoxetine, I think they were called. And uh, that made it worse because the highs were higher, the lows, lows were, were lower. lower. Yeah. Um, that made it worse. And then they put me on something else. And then they put me on lithium. Then I came off that and I, luckily I'd be, not look. I can't believe I just fucking said that. There's no <laughs> fucking luck involved. Yeah. I then came off that, but yeah, I think you're right about this. Um, this whole people do make a part of their identity. I have bipolar. You don't have bipolar. Mm -hmm. You don't have depression. You don't have anxiety. Like this is a big thing that we'll probably end up talking about loads, which is one of the things that one of the things that people are gonna handle on is not that's not who you are. It's a state. It's just a state that you're in at a particular moment in time. And I, I train on this on webinars, online trainings, and speaking from the stage all the time. A state, depression is a state, anxiety is a state, overwhelm is a state, and these states are created. So the, the definition of a state is the particular condition that someone or something finds themselves in at a particular moment in time. You weren't born depressed, you weren't born anxious, yeah. you weren't born bipolar, you weren't born, and sure there are probably some, in fact I know there are some, maybe some predispositions to it, but that doesn't mean to say that it, like for example, nobody else in my family has been diagnosed bipolar. Yeah, so it's not, it's not like it's, no, it's set to be. No, it's not always a DNA no, thing. No. Like, and again, even if they have, I've kind of proven that it's not. Yeah. It it's hasn't a, really it, been a thing. You can work yeah. with it if, if it is. The, the, the thing is, so, like, I'm not shitting on fucking doctors and GPs here, but. No, they're doing the I've, best. I've, they're doing the best. I've been, I don't know how many times I've been to get diagnosed with stuff for acne or whatever it is. Half the time they say, we don't know. Yeah. And, and, and well, at least I'm honest. Exactly. They, they, they don't know, but people, they, they hear something and they're like, right, well, that, I've got that. He's the well, dude, doctor we, said it, we, I've got it. Think about this, right? Like how much research we do online, like mm. about symptoms. Google. Like, whenever, a if a doctor gives me a med for something, whatever it is, uh -huh. like if he's like, right, you need to take this antibiotic for this chest infection or whatever. Yeah. Like, or I remember I got a fucking, I got bit. In 2018, I got fucking bit, right? And I almost had fucking sep sepsis, right? Really bad blood poisoning. And uh, I got to the doctors in time and they gave me these meds. 
and I started Googling the, what the meds were and looking at the side effects and I'm like, that would stop me from doing anything if yeah. you start Googling the, the, the... And actually, on this note, I want to touch on this. So that was bipolar. Yeah. That was depression. <laughs> yeah. That was being super low. And then I went on a journey, which we'll look at in a second. But I also want to touch on anxiety because we, we talked about, like, we talked about language that we use. We talked about making it part of your identity. We talked about people saying things like, my anxiety, my depression, my bipolar. Someone said to me the other day as well, I have imposter syndrome. Like, really, bro? You don't it's have imposter up. syndrome. Yeah. It's a fucking made up label by the yeah. personal development industry. The word. <laughs> that basically just means you're uncomfortable. Yeah. Like, what meds do you take for imposter syndrome? Listen, I've got fucking imposter syndrome doing this fucking podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still doing it. So imposter syndrome isn't even a thing. It's known as, it's just you being uncomfortable and believing yeah. your thoughts. Like, if it was really a syndrome, think about how, listen to the language there, man. Imposter, imposter syndrome. syndrome. Listen Syndrome such a powerful like, word, isn't it? Well, just imagine, like, how much intensity that language yeah. adds to what essentially is just a feeling. All it, all it is I is... I feel uncomfortable. Oh, I have an imposter syndrome. The, the word I would use for it is new. I'm yeah. new to... Yeah, I'm brand new. I'm a white belt. I'm new to podcasting. I'm a white belt. I'm new to using a fucking camera. I'm yeah. new... I'm a white belt. Yeah. I'm, That's a, I'm essentially, I'm a fucking white belt. So, imposter syndrome often just means you're... Unco- I could do that. I could think of loads more. Self-sabotage is another one. Yeah. No such thing as... Anyway. Yeah. So, anxiety. I wanted to touch on this because this is important. Although... I'm completely off topic here. Listen, it's called Paul Moore Talk Shit. Yeah. And guess what? It's my fucking show. Shit comes backwards. I can talk about whatever the fuck I want. It's my fucking show. It's my ball. And if you don't like it, I'm taking it home. <laughs> Putting a knife in yeah, it. Ted's and volleys, I'm taking it home. So this anxiety thing, I remember going on a course and it was just after I had this gigantic panic attack coming, going to Chicago. Yeah. Actually, I was halfway through flight to Chicago. A lot of people have heard this story before. And uh, I decided after that flight, so I was four hours into an eight-hour flight to Chicago. I was watching a film and the film was like a bit like Molly and me. I can't even remember what it was, but it was involving family and I was crying and shit like that. And I said, I need to More text college. Leslie and see what the kids are. And all I could think of is my kids say a lot of the time, where's dad? Mm-hmm. And I love hearing them say, ask him where I am. Yeah. And I just had this picture of the picture of him coming in from school saying, where's dad? And I wanted to ring them and I couldn't. And I saw I created this fucking gigantic, and I'd always struggled with anxiety. Like for a long ass time, I'd struggle with anxiety. And it would still crop. It would actually still crop up now if I didn't get a hand on it. And I'm, we'll talk about that in another show. But um, I, I had such a, I created, got myself in such a state I needed to get sedated by the the um the cabin crew. They had to ring a doctor. They asked me what meds I was on there and then, and then they gave me these meds that fucking wiped me out for the rest of the flight. And I remember being so fucked up that I was me, me and Leslie were talking about this actually. My wife, I was talking about this. It might have been on holiday. Anyway, we're having this conversation with someone about me being so fucked up on this flight that I was three hours early for the next flight. So I was flying from Chicago to a place called Syracuse in New York for my friend Steve Krebs' wedding. What up, Steve Krebs? Congratulations on your brown belt, by the way, homie. So I, uh, anyway, I missed this flight. I was Mm. three hours early, by the way, and I was at the gate. Mm -hmm. So I'm not just in the airport. I'm I'm sat at the gate and I miss it. So fucked up. So after that, so essentially I was sedated, but then I had to get a flight the next day where I created that whole state again. But luckily it was like a now our flight. Uh-huh. I remember this when I first started getting a handle on this. I played, um, it was it was like pool on your phone. I played pool. the eight ball pool game Something against like other that. people. Like yeah, one of the yeah. first ever, well, I, I was on, it wasn't against other people, it was against the computer. Uh-huh. And that got me through the flight, uh-huh. right? But after that, I remember on the way home, I said to Krebs, I said, listen, mate, you're going to have to get me something to help me get home. So he got me some Xanax. I slept for 11 hours. No shit, 11 hours. He got me some, I took two Xanax. And he, Krebs used to have problems with anxiety back then yeah. as well. I was off me fucking face on these Xanax. But when I got home, I said, listen, I can't go through that experience again of that. Yeah. So actually for about six months, I still took fucking diazepam on flights. Anyway, I went on this, I signed up for this course with a guy called Charles Linden. And it was expensive. It was a retreat. It was maybe fucking five grand or something like that, right? Um, and we'll talk about all the other courses that I've done in a sec. But I was—I remember being blown away by this, and this is really important for you to understand. Before the course, I got sent like a DVD box set. That's how fucking long ago it was. DVD, yeah. DVD box set, and you had to watch the DVDs before you came on the uh-huh. retreat. The first DVD said this: Stop talking about anxiety. Mm. Stop reading about anxiety. Stop looking for solutions to your anxiety. Mm-hmm. Stop Googling the symptoms of anxiety. 
Stop thinking about anxiety. Yeah. Hang on a second. I've just fucking paid you five grand <laughs> to come on this anxiety course and you're telling me not to read about it, look yeah. at it anymore. And funny enough, I learned so much from that because this is what people like to do. Yeah. They like to talk about it. Yeah. And, and so much and, research. And here's the thing. I'm like, talking is great, but with, I talk, I've talked about this with Tyson. I'm like, talking's not the fucking answer. No. Talking is a start. Yeah. Talking is a start. But then if you go back to doing the, like, listen, you could come and talk to me today. A lot of people are like, Paul, I really want to talk to you. Do you do one of ones? Any chance you're calling me? I'm like, listen, I don't even get time to fucking call my friends. Never mind a guy that I've never met before. But here's the thing. Talking's not going to fucking save you from anything. No. If you go back, you could talk to me today. And if you go back to doing the same actions that got you in the place you're at right now, nothing will fucking change. No. So what he was saying was that the more you place your attention on anxiety, the more anxiety you'll create. And that was life-changing advice for me. And when we do a podcast about my holiday and the lessons that I learned from traveling to Kofu, from having a mask on, from being in the airports, from the drip. When we, when we get out and talk about that, I'll talk a little bit more about anxiety and um, phobias. Mm -hmm. Phobias, because I've cured a couple of those as well. I say cured, I say handled is, is probably a better word. I'm cured anything. Sound like a fucking Nobel Prize winner. <laughs> <laughs> I've just I've just managed to handle a couple of issues that I've got. I just wanted to get that point across because it's so important because we're going to be talking yeah. a lot about mindset, mental health, the challenges of being a modern man, a, a modern woman, whatever it is you want to call yourself. But that whole talking about it and putting your focus on it all the time. Because people, listen, when you're struggling, you get obsessed with how you don't want to feel. Oh, I don't want to feel like this. And one of the first questions I ask anybody is, dude, how the fuck do you want to feel? And people don't know. They just know that they don't want to feel the way they do. The problem with that is, like the anxiety thing, you get what you're focused on. Yeah. So what you focus on will always grow. So if you're focused on anxiety, you're focused on depression, you'll just get more of it. Your focus has got to be on how you want to feel. It's like, if I'm thinking about reading about, and listen, I remember when I was, bi when I was bipolar, how crazy is that? I've just said that. I remember when I was struggling with bipolar, I don't even think about it now, mate. No. Nah, not at all. I was in all sorts of groups, yeah. support groups, and I follow all these bipolar pages, and I follow, and that's all they'd be talking about. Yeah, that's all they'd be talking about. And then when I'm focused on that, even though it might have been positive messages and that, I'd be, I'd experience more of it. Yeah, like, and then when I start to focus, it's like that's like for me watering weeds. Yeah, I think when it comes to especially online as well, there's so much shit out there. <sighs> like pe people just saying things for the sake of saying it. So then they come up with all these fucking hippie, this is what you should be doing, you should be... The, the worst ones that get me are like the, the Instagram, I'm, I'm, I'm oh, saying Instagram, Instagram but it's like, it's a fucking never-ending list of wake up on a morning, do this, do this, do this, and it's it, that must take about two fucking hours, and then when people are coming in and actually, the, the people who are feeling all these emotions, yeah. come in, read that and go, right, well, I only got through half that list, feel 10 times worse after it. Yeah. And it's just because they think, oh, well, it's it's, it's made on a nice Instagram fucking uh, canvas. <laughs> it must be made by someone who knows what the fuck they're talking yeah. about. It's probably someone who doesn't have a fucking Scooby-Doo. Yeah. Yeah. And that that's what kind of get, and, and it comes to the, the, the same way. Social media is an interesting thing. I know we've talked about this with a lot of guests, is that it's it's great in one way, but it's fucking terrible in another yeah. way. Yeah, because anyone, anyone can put stuff my on. My approach with social media is really simple, is that I, I just create more than I consume. Like I'm a businessman. Yeah, I'm not gonna get it. I'm not gonna get it twisted. That would I use Instagram if I didn't have a business? Possibly not. Mm. Possibly not. Mm. I mean, I have this thing where I'm obsessed with not going over following a thousand people. I follow my friends. I follow fighters and a few athletes and actors that I like. Mm -hmm. I don't really follow anybody else. Yeah. Um. I think I need to do a little fucking. Yeah. I had a look at mine this morning. I went. I follow 1,200 people. Yeah. I don't even fucking know 1,200 yeah, people. Yeah, 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 and yeah, I, yeah. I was actually, I'd had a little scroll through and I was like, I literally don't even know it who actually has this really cool. Well, as soon as mine hits a thousands, I'm like, right, who am I unfollowing? Yeah. And it looks at who least interacted with, it gives you a list. Does it? And I'm like, well, if I'm not liking their posts, there must be fucking shit. Yeah. So like, I, just, there's nothing. I, I unfollow a bunch of people. Yeah. But I think that, that Facebook might be a little bit different because I'd use that to keep in touch with friends and yeah, family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but essentially, like, if you got to think about this, if you follow loads of people, and they're all giving you different levels of advice. Mm. It's like too many cooks spo spoil the broth. Like, mm -hmm. who the fuck do you, who the fuck do you pay attention to? Yeah. I'm gonna say something quite controversial now. I'm paying attention to the people that I pay fucking money to. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like, if you are that good, if your advice was that amazing, I'd have bought your book. Mm -hmm. I'd have joined your program. Mm -hmm. I'd have been to your event, if I can, if that's the kind of thing that you do. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just taking in information for the sake of it. And I think we're in a we're in an information overload right now. 100%. In terms of you should do this. 100%. Do. And that's what I didn't want to make this podcast about, is giving advice and advice and advice. I don't mind doing that, and that's what I'll do, but I'll be sharing from no theory. You'll never find me fucking just reading from fucking books. Uh -huh. All of the shit that I'm going to share with you is stuff that I've experienced and I believe because of results mm -hmm. and proof and mm -hmm. evidence. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> little, little social media Let's around. go back to 2014, 2015. <laughs> um, so you talked about, you asked me about um, when did I first start thinking I got my shit together. And like I say, I'm still doing it now. Mm -hmm. The stuff that I do now is the stuff that I teach in all my programs and I can't see myself stopping doing unless it's like a slightly different version of it, like so as I evolve. Let us frame the question a bit better then. When when did well when did you start Unstartable? Start Unstartable 2016. So 2016, a fair, fair while after. Yeah, I mean Because I, 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 as you say, you kind of fell into it, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Didn't, I went it, I remember going to Wake Up Warrior in Laguna Beach, California. I actually get criticized for doing that program. Oh, well, it's all right for you spending all that money to go to California. I'm like, well. I think you're forgetting about the fact that I sacrificed everything, everything. to make yeah. money. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're forgetting about that part. Oh, well, not everyone can go afford to go to Laguna Beach, California. Yeah, well, I sacrificed everything to be able to fucking go there, mate. Yeah. You forget, you must have forgot the fucking 4 a.m. stocks that I had. Mm -hmm. All the criticism that I got on social media even before then. Yeah. People recording podcasts about me. That shit used to happen back in 2013. People were talking shit about yeah. me. Um, anyway, I went I went there in, in October 2014 and learned some amazing tools. Learned the concept of not just building your business, having goals in other areas of life. That's where I discovered Byron Katie. That's mm -hmm. where I discovered meditation. That's where I discovered a bunch of very cool shit. That's where I discovered, actually, the power of association and the power of your peer group. Um, and that, I remember being there, and Gary J. White said to me, Paul, you, you've got, you should be coaching men. I remember... There was a guy there called Greg who was in what was called Warrior Week then. Warrior Week was basically a five-day experience where you fucking beat the shit out of people. You, had, you did all this mad shit that basically tested you physically. Was this before you box as well? This is before I boxed, yeah. This yeah. is what this is what probably woke me up a little bit of boxing. Yeah. yeah. And actually, my friend Steve Krebs was there and I had to punch my friend in the face, <laughs> which I actually really enjoy doing now, but I'd never done it then. I'd never done it then. And actually, do you know what's crazy? Here's the thing. When we went out there and I had this, I had to fight men that I didn't know there was like fucking eight of them that I have a fight with. It, it, the felt the rounds felt so long and mm. they were like thirty seconds. Yeah. No shit. <laughs> it's because it's just that it, I'd just never done it before. It was just yeah. I was like fucking hell. I felt like a lifetime. Yeah. I actually, it was only thirty seconds. Now it's fucking we do. I bet it felt a lot worse. We have to like. It. I'm like, do I have to stop? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, dude, it felt crazy because I was out of shape as well. But I bet the build-up had a lot to oh, do with it as well. Was nuts, yeah, I was fucking jet-lagged. I was still on bipolar meds. I was yeah. on lithium. I was fucked. But that that whole experience there, um, and I remember th this guy called Greg Anderson, where I do this workout, like CrossFit workout on Roll Machine, and mm -hmm. I was partnered with him. And I was coaching him, and I was helping, I was motivating. Gareth said to me, Paul, you, you need to do be coaching men. And then he nagged at me for a fucking long time. And yeah. I was like, man, I, I don't feel right. It doesn't feel good. It, so when was this Warrior Week? This was in 2014, October 2014. Shit, so yeah. it wasn't even long after the first... Yeah. Well, the first breakdown, I remember a couple of weeks after it happened, and actually... I'd do you think that was the catalyst? Of, did you did you have a book prior to it? Or do you no. think... So that was, no, that's I what made in it. August, in August, I ended up in the um, in a mental hospital for three days, a bead wing. Shit. The police had found me in the sea. <laughs> out of my waist. I've got no fucking memory of it at all. Really? Not much. I was, that's how fucked up I was. Yeah. Like, I wasn't on, I don't think I was on any meds then, but I was fucking all over the place. I yeah. remember actually, it was probably Did six, you just think that cause it six was so years ago, almost of the day, I was at a wedding in Italy. My friend Travis Jones, Travis lives in Australia, um, top fucking dude. I went to his wedding in, um, where was it? It was near Capri, I think. It was like on the Amalfi Coast. It was fucking beautiful. And I remember drinking a lot mm -hmm. while we were there for this wedding. Um, oh, so it was just after you'd come back from that? Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah, I remember actually getting back from that wedding and going out on the fucking booze and the sniff because yeah. I didn't get any sniff in Italy. Yeah. I was right on it when I got back. And then I just remember the week after that being fucked. Mm -hmm. And anyway, I, I was probably in bed for about 10 days and just lying in bed. Um, not in the house we're in now, but in, in on Westville Crown Village. And I 
remember lying in bed for 10 days and I got tagged in something on Facebook. At this point, I was like, I think I disappeared from Facebook for about 18 months, just did nothing. And I remember getting tagged in something by a guy called Darren. And he tagged me in this video and he said, um, Paul Mort, you need this guy. Or like this guy's like the American version of you, that's yeah. what he said. And it was this guy called Garrett J. White. And I remember it, Garrett will love this. He had these fucking whiteboards where he'd just be, just, he'd be talking about bipolar and porn and drugs and being angry. And he basically said things that I'd never heard said before, but mm. that I thought, kind of like I did with my video. Yeah. And he was teaching these concepts and he was aggressive and he was in your face and he was fucking swearing. And I was like, yeah, this is the guy for me. Yeah. And I remember I handed over, I think it was something like 10 grand. It wasn't, it was no joke, this money. And I, I basically said, yeah, you're the guy that's, he was the first guy that I'd ever knew really resonated with. And like I say, he woke me up to all these concepts. And then I ended up going to the um, Byron Katie nine day school for the work, which was incredible. I ended up discovering a lady called Debbie Ford who, who, who passed away. Mm -hmm before that and working with with trainers from her um institute uh that's where i discovered these shia monks that's where i, I got in um in the boxing a little bit and that kind of that's where i've ended up right now well, i mean since then i've done a bunch of different shit but that was probably one of the catalysts for doing what i do now was just the impact that that had on me what what do, why do you think that why do you think men need that that type of approach that in your face rocket up the arse because, as you said earlier, Molly Coddling isn't... Well, I mean, it works for some people, yeah. but mass majority of, like, alpha men yeah. don't kind of don't want that. Yeah. And you think it's because they, they appreciate, because that's what they do if... if, if oh, I, well, as, as you were saying earlier, that's what you'd want someone to do to you. They have a natural aggression. Yeah. And they kind of respect it, they would respect you say? It. Yeah, they respect it. I think men have a natural aggression. I think that... It'll often maybe to do with their upbringing as well, like whether they were, were a daddy's boy or a fucking mummy's yeah. boy or, or whatever. And again, especially the men that I work with, because it's not every man that needs this. No. Well, that's some say, men some, do some, need a no. on the shoulder, but yeah. a lot of the men that I work with have also, they've become what I would call who I was, which is king of the shitheads. Mm. They've built this business. Mm -hmm. They've kind of, they're the, they're the kind of leader of their circle of friends because they're the most successful. They're the main breadwinner in the house. Mm. They used to not be told what to do. Yeah. And again, they've, they, 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 like I say, the king, the shitheads, and then they, they get, they, they've got not many, much respect for anyone else around them because yeah. they're, the, they're the leader they're of the, the boy. peer group. They're the man. So that's why you've seen me do this. I have the fucking butt heads with people. Yeah. I'm, I have to get, not aggressive, but I have to be willing to call people out on their shit. Yeah. Because... I've never seen anyone change as a result of being told what they want to hear. Yeah, because it means a lot of people believe their own lies, and that's Absolutely. I think that's where they, this well the, the the start to the point where yeah they just they believe everything, and then they've got to a point where the they're just not used to being fucking called out on their shit. Yeah, they get called out on their shit by maybe their wife, maybe a few of their friends, but they don't expect their results. Yeah, they don't respect that person's results. Yeah, they've maybe let them down so many times, and again, a lot of the time there's like. They know there's no consequence to their actions. Exactly. Really. Consequence. I think that, so well, accountability. That's it is it, that. It is that. And I think that, that when you've got a guy who is giving you a rocket up the arse, mm -hmm. there is a bit of a consequence because yeah. you don't want to let him down. You don't yeah. want to be proved. You, you don't want to be kind of out alpha if you like. So you're yeah. like, fuck you. That's what I was like with yeah. Garrett. I was like, fuck you. But it brings back, th this This is something that is fucking it's competitive. It's, it's, in your genes as well. Yeah, it's some kind of natural competitiveness where yeah. you're like, fuck you. Yeah. I'll show you, dickhead. It's like, tri like tribal as well. Yeah. It's kind of, Me, you want to be the... Yeah, absolutely. And I'm still like that now. I'm like, you tell me that I can't do something? What? Yeah. Boy, you can't get Titan for you on your podcast. Yeah. Who can't? Yeah. Titan's only ever done three podcasts before with us. I was like, who can't like a big on? fuck you to the it face. Is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And I think that that's a, a male. And again, I've never been a woman, so don't start giving me shit, right? Yeah. Listen, if you don't like what I'm saying, I'll say it right now. Go and listen to some fuck else's podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I've never been a woman, so I don't know about competitiveness, but men have this natural competitiveness. 100%. And again, it's probably something, not every man, it's probably something to do with some kind of primal nature. Of wanting to be the leader of the group, of wanting mm. to mate, yeah. of wanting to, and I, and I think one show of off. That's all. That's all it is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it is. Not well, not sorry. Showing off is probably a bad word, but back in the day, if you wanted, yeah, to go swing your fucking dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. And I think that I think that one of our more primal instincts, and this is why I say a lot of my guys, the reason why 
we get caught up in negative thinking is that it's it's almost without exception, yeah. almost every one of our first thoughts is negative, yeah. right? And that for me is because one of our most primal instincts is, or our most primal instincts is prey and predator. What am I going to eat? Mm. I'm going to get eaten. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not sure what the fuck's going to eat you these days. <laughs> Chance will be a fucking fine thing, but <laughs> but like you read, what am I going to eat? And am I going to be eaten? So that kind of that's in there as well. It's like this natural thing that men seem to have for mm -hmm. for competition and, and and a bit of fucking ego in there as well. So uh, yeah, tw 2014 was a fucking journey for me, and I suppose I'm still fucking on it. I mean, since then I've trained with fucking Dr. John D. Martini. I trained with Dan Sullivan and strategic coach. Obviously, I trained with Wake Up Warrior. There's a, there's, I've trained with Tony Robbins. Um, I've I, I, with yes, who, who's next? Who's next for me? Because I know you've been say, you've yeah. been you've been you've been talking about a course a lot. Who's next? Let's get it out. Let's well, get it I'll out there. Tell you what I'm gonna do. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I've, I've got a few things lined up. I'm, I, I, I like this guy called Elliot Hulse. I, I interviewed Elliot Hulse back on my podcast back in the day. I like Brendan Bashard stuff. Mm -hmm. When people are like, you into Brendan Bashard, I'm like, well, I kind of am. People are like, Paul, he's the fucking polar opposite to you, and he kind of is. But I still but think some of his work. content's good. Yeah, yeah, I still think some of his content's good. Obviously, I'm I'm also in um, Nick James' Seven Figure Mastermind, which mm -hmm. is fucking amazing. Um, I was lucky enough to speak at one of his events last year, and if you don't mind me saying, fucking stole the show, mush. Um, and uh, but I think I don't know. Do you know? Do you know the problem that I've got right now is? I like live shit. Yeah. I like going and experience like this. I like, I'll, there's just something, I, I, and I, it's probably something to do with the fact that I isolated myself so badly. When I was in Marbella, I was isolated as fuck. Even when I came back home for the first year, I didn't really bother with anybody. Yeah. I was trying to get in shape on my own in the garage. Um, so I love being at a live event. And the problem is right now is there fucking isn't any. There isn't. No. I mean, we ran our first live event here at Unstoppable um, at the end of July. And it was yeah. fucking incredible. But I don't know anybody else that's running live events. Mm. So it'll be, well, here's the thing. When America opens its fucking doors, is. when America opens <laughs> its doors, that'll probably be where I'll be going. So yeah. it'll probably be, listen, I'm, I'm, I really want to do a Robin's fucking live. Yeah, experience. yes. So we'll see. I'm, I'm not getting caught up in it though, Mac, because I also have this opinion that um, we get, and this might be some of you guys listening or resonate with this, we get kind of obsessed with learning new stuff and not executing shit. Like, I have this saying where, listen, I don't, I'm not going to go and learn anything new when there's still stuff to do. Yeah. Like, there's so many people who are smarter than me who aren't doing what I'm doing. And it's simply because they just collect information. Yeah. They're information collectors. I'm a fucking high-level implementer. Like, I'll learn something. I'll be, Mac, I'm going to do this yet. Yeah. But that, that in itself can cause anxiety because you, right, I'm... For example, my case, right, I've got to do, learn about how to fucking make podcasts, edit podcasts, I've got to do Facebook ads. Doing, learning all them at the same time and then and not doing anything with it, it's just a fucking shit show in my head. Yeah. So, nail down on one thing first. And yeah. It's pointless just going and, and, and learning. Or It's like learning about, as you were saying, doing the research on anxiety and... Yeah. You're reading so much about I mean, it, like but you're not doing anything. Instructionals and they're never fucking sparring. They're not doing it. All it is is it's just. We it's just had a little roll around in the office before, by the way. My <laughs> wife and Catherine are uh, office admin. Like we're <laughs> fucking rolling around the floor. Matt's got jeans, a t-shirt, and a cap on, and we're fucking both got our shoes off, rolling around the floor. Funny enough, it's something that I learned on the flight back from fucking Corfu. But the implementation. But it is implementation. Is it? Now, like, now you've felt it. Like, now you've I'm done it. Tonight. I need to practice this on you before I go and do yeah. it. Um, but that's the thing. It's like. Listen, with any of the stuff that you're going to learn on these podcasts and any of the insights you're going to get, action's the only fucking answer. Yeah, you can listen to as many of these fucking podcasts, but if you do fuck all with the information, then it's point you shouldn't even listen to it. The same with the people are like, I mean, not keep listening. People say to me all the time, like, <laughs> what's the best, what are your recommended books? I'm like, do you know what? I haven't actually read that many this year, yeah. Mac. Do you know why? Because I've been in fucking action mode. Yeah. If I have a gap <clears> in my knowledge, I'll then go and learn that, or I'll get you to learn it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, listen, dude, I don't know how to do these high-end podcasts with a great fucking video on that. How could you possibly do that? There's no point in me learning it because I'm not going to be the guy that's editing yeah. shit. But that's a bit like... But if I see a gap in my knowledge, if I'm like, right, yeah. I need to get... Like, that's what the, that's what the jiu-jitsu thing did. Yeah. So I'm like, there is no point in me watching jiu-jitsu instructionals when I'm still not in shape, mm -hmm. for example. But I'm like... Right, when I roll with Brashy, what's up, Brashy? Purple belt, fucking savage, false right purple belt, horrible to roll with. He does this thing that most of you guys know what I'm talking about, where when he's in half guard, he sits up. 
shoots the underhook. He sits up and shoots the underhook. So it kept happening to me. You don't do it that much, but you started doing it more. Yeah. And almost everyone that I roll with does that and then we'll grab a single, right? Yeah. Little Tom Owen does it all the time as well. He grabs a single. And it's a fucking nightmare because I love passing from half guard. So, and then I just started getting swept and swept and swept from half guard and not doing anything. So I was like, do you know what? I, I, I've got a gap in my knowledge here. Mm-hmm. So I bought a fucking instructional and I watched the bit that said, he has how to shut down half guard from... from and we figured out he has how to sh- shut down the <laughs> from half guard. And then tonight, guess what? You're gonna I, practice I'm going to try it. it. Yeah. I've already tried it on my... I'm going to try it live tonight. Otherwise, mm-hmm. there's, there's no point in learning it. It's fucking... It's, there's no it's, point in learning it. Nah, it's point... So it's pointless. like, when I'm learning, and this is a new way to look at it because, again, a lot of people that listen to podcasts, they get addicted to listen to podcasts. Like, I'm... Listen... I'm going to tell the truth. I'm not listening to a fucking three-hour Joe Rogan podcast. Yeah. I haven't got fucking three hours to learn. Yeah. I've got maybe, if there's something in there, I've got, to, and listen, it's an entertainment thing. What I'm hoping for with Paul Moore Talk Shit is that there's entertainment. We'll talk about fun shit and maybe crack some jokes and you laugh at them. Because <laughs> if you don't, I'm going to laugh at them. Um, but also um, that there's going to be some that, that there's going to be some information in them as well. But I, what I don't want to do is overload you with a bunch of information a bunch of stuff that you're never going to fucking do anything with. Yeah. It's pointless. And I think that's the thing with podcasts and audiobooks. It's like, I very rarely listen to audiobooks either. Like, if I've got something, if I'm like, do you know what? This thing isn't working as well as I want it to. Do I need to just do more work? Do I need to work harder at it? Do I need to be more consistent with it? Or do I need new knowledge? Yeah. For me, there's no point in picking up knowledge for the sake of it. I used yeah. to be that guy. Now, don't get me wrong. I still study. But I'm not obsessing over how many pages I've read. Yeah. Because that, how many that reading time or? could be spent taking action. And it's only the action that's going to get the results anyway. Like, that's a, this is a big thing, this. I'm almost like, listen, if you got something that needs doing, turn off the fucking podcast, go and do it, and then come back. I, I had this last night. So I, I've been doing the, the course for the Facebook ads and stuff. Yeah. And I was kind of putting it off. And I found myself doing, like, looking for other things. Yeah. And then I was just kind of... It, and it, it's it's because of the action. It, yeah. it, it You build up such as drama show in your head yeah. for, before the task. And then, you know what I was saying? I'm going to, the trigger for me is mm-hmm. to sit down, open my laptop, yeah. and then I'm getting on with the work. Yeah. And as soon as I opened it, I was fucking flying. Yeah. Well, but that's I, like, listen, I'm like that with training as well. I'm like, sometimes I'm not feeling it. Yeah. And I'm like, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to, I'm going to commit to the warm up here. That's mm-hmm. it. That's, that's why often one of the first things I do for work every day is I'll be like, fuck it, I'm going to do a Facebook live. It's easy. Yeah. Gets my brain in gear. Yeah. Gets me moving. It's one of the reasons why I don't work out hard in the morning either. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I want to do something easy in the morning. I want a quick win in the football. Yeah. I want a quick win in the books. I want to do something that makes me feel good. And then I'm then I'm on the, the roll. The ball's rolling. So, so yeah, this knowledge thing, it's, um, and this study thing, I'm not saying for one fucking minute that's studying and getting new knowledge and learning and getting smarter and all of that stuff. I'm not saying for a minute that isn't important. But that is often not the thing that's going to generate the results. It's what you if, if you're implementing it. That's what it. If if you if you can learn at a rate where you're implementing it as you're going, yeah, amazing. But what most people aren't doing is the implementation of yeah. what they're learning. Yeah. And, and then that's it, a, yeah, that's the thing. Max had three promotions. He's been working here for thirteen months now, right? Yeah, just over thirteen yeah. months. Just over. And he's a. Uh, He's had three promotions or two. Prom- he's had three job titles. Three job titles, two Those promotions. He's like, What's your job title now? <laughs> Uh, marketing strategist. <laughs> marketing strategist, he means. Strategist. strategist? I, love that. I love that. He's even making up his own job title. I'm we didn't give him a job title, really, though, did we? No, nah, well, it was, it was business admin assistant, then head of operations, then mark, marketing I, I think I prefer head of operations. I yeah. might do a flip back operations on it. Operations manager. Operations manager. Operations manager. Yeah. It could be operations director, if you like. Ooh, I'll take yeah, that producer one. Producer Mark today. Producer Mark today. Then it'll be video, <laughs> then it'll be video guy. I'll have to have different caps for I each fucking you, job. Different cap, bro. Marketing yeah, cap, fucking. So, so let me, uh, b- before we wrap up the day, I want you to, I, I want to kind of explain who the fuck Mac is, right? Because you're probably thinking, who the fuck's this young guy? Who the fuck is that who guy? How old are you, Mac? I'm 22. So Mac's 22. He's been working with us for a year now. And he's got a very interesting story because uh, we talk about this quite regularly. Mac had zero experience of working in an office, particularly of working for and with somebody like me. Yeah. There are not many ex- people who will have experience of working <laughs> with somebody like me. No. It's quite intense. 
No. <laughs> it's quite intense. <laughs> but back at the time, actually, was working in a factory as a plater, which basically means what? Just hit, hitting things with metal. I used to build tanks down on the time. Now you work with a fucking tank. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I work with one. So you used to work down on the time, hitting metal. On a on like a factory like line, like a kind of yeah. It wasn't it wasn't so much a production line like um, where you had to stay at your bay, but it was in a sense as the job moved around the line. You, but you could, it, it wasn't as strict Wait, as overalls and that. Yeah, overalls, oh, all that really? shit. Ha, or fucking industrially deaf, so I'm probably shouting in the mic. Yes, <laughs> industrially all right. deaf. They're I all right with someone <laughs> shouting down the mic. Trust me, that's all I do. All so right. so Mac, um, Mac. So I basically gave someone a job full time in a brand new HQ that I haven't moved into yet, who was a fucking plate who ain't metal. And I wanted him to run essentially the administration, the fucking website stuff for yeah. me with zero knowledge. Zero fucking knowledge. <laughs> but the reason I hired Mark was because he had a great fucking attitude. And um, at the time, he'd set up this Amazon thing and just had a great fucking attitude. So um, I've invited him onto the podcast, A, because producing it, B, because. The big thing is I think you can add some value to the conversation and stop me from fucking rambling, rambling on, on and ending up down the fucking rabbit hole. I think a younger opinion on things as well is throughout the way. Because you got I mean, you're probably not going to be having many conversations. I'm also with... old as fuck. <laughs> Don't get I'm on this shit. I'm old as fuck. I'm 40. <laughs> are you going to are you gonna tell them the story? Because you, ah, you're fucking... I may as well finish <laughs> on this. So the other week, me and Matt are rolling jiu-jitsu in the gate in the laundrette, which is also known as my garage, which is also known as... The uh, dungeon. The hottest place on earth. Aye, hottest hot. place on earth. You know what's funny? When we're in Corfu, me and Leslie trained and it was red hot. And she was like, I'm so fucking hot. I was like, this, this is, is how nothing. Hot it is. <laughs> this is how hot it is in the... Like, honestly, my body was all right with it because yeah. my body conditioned. was conditioned to train in the laundrette. The yeah. heat of the laundrette. Yeah. People queuing up to come and train in the laundrette until they feel the heat. Yeah. Anyway, the, um, so we're rolling and Mac fucking smashed me in the gear right now. I'm human, so I had this moment where I was feeling sorry for myself. I felt so sorry for myself that I almost, I made him box after, just so I felt a little bit better. Because yeah, I, I, I was like, he's fucking smashed me for six rounds straight here. Let's box and see if I can punch him in the face instead. Anyway, he said to me at the end, and loads of people have heard this story now, he said, and, and it was an attempt to make me feel better, he said, Paul, you're twice me age, man. I was like, bro, you've legit just... Taking my fucking popcorn. <laughs> you've taken my tub of popcorn. That already doesn't have much in it. And pissed in it. No, and you've took a fucking giant oh, shit. dump in Big it. Shit. And then puked on top of the shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, dude, anything else you think I should cover in this first episode? Um, No. Dude, we've covered think, a lot yeah, of ground. Dude. We're a lot of ground. We've covered a lot of ground. If I mean, one, listen, we've got fucking many more to do. Well, we've got many more to do. I've got a lot more opinions to share and techniques and strategies to share and tools to share. So before I go, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. And I wanted mm. to say this. If you subscribe to the channel um, and you go on my Instagram or my Facebook, you tag two people in the post that has a picture of my book, mm. James Smith's book, and a signed glove from the Gypsy King himself, and you subscribe to the podcast, you'll be in with a chance of winning that phenomenal little bundle. If you want the show notes from this and you want a bunch of free shit and maybe you want to gr grab a copy of my best-selling book, Fucking Unstartable, head on over to paulmote.uk and... Give them that one more time. What are they going to do? I'm going to give you that one more time. I'm yeah. going to give you that one more time. Um, if you would like to win a signed copy of my book, a signed copy of James Smith's book, and a signed copy of a glove, a signed copy of a glove, a signed glove from the Gypsy King himself, head on over to my Facebook and or Instagram and look for the post, the photo of those three things. Tag two friends, share the post, and make sure you subscribe to Paul Mort Talk Shit and you will, be with it, you will be in with a chance of winning that little amazing bundle. Mm. I'll see you on the other side. Peace out, motherfucker.